Welcome back, class. I'm Matt, your guide here on Y Caliber, and after a long absence, we are back. And today we are playing a one-shot of Dungeon World, uh, featuring me as the GM. So get ready for a disaster. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean, long absence? I thought we were making videos all the time, and I've seen lots of YouTube uploads. Well, clearly, but you sound very far away, so maybe that's the problem. You are talking from the past. Sounds about right. Let me know if this Hitler chap is okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> that explains it. I knew there was a phonograph involved somehow. <laughs> I think I stole that joke from Archer. <laughs> uh, so today, we are joined by Smug, who is playing Willem the Bard. Hi, Smug. Hello? That's better. Hello? <laughs> and we're joined by Steve. Steven Sadal, noted author, he is playing Incursio. Hi. And we've got Mike as Lanilar. Hey there. Um, I actually got to play Dungeon World at PAX for the first time with Mike. And, you did. Uh, if we only we'd a... recorded it. Well, we had a blast, and that's why we're doing this now. Also, Jared's doing something. And uh, we He's have... jacking it? Probably. By it, we mean a car. He has decided to become the Fast and the Furious. It's pretty legit. No, that's that's not what I meant. I know. And we are also joined by Feral Knights, noted Warframe artist, who is playing, uh, I guess, Hawk. Hello, friends. Now, we unlicensed crossover. Now, uh, a little bit about Dungeon World. So this is a game by Sage Kobold Press. It is based on the Apocalypse World system. And the entire focus of Dungeon World is to get into the game and do awesome stuff with as little complication as possible. Um, and if you've seen my channel and seen how we like to role play in this, uh, in this group, then you can already tell that this is a pretty good system for us to use. So, um, rules Where's like the map grid. There's no grid. But we we had to have one. No, we don't need a grid. We have the theater oh. of the mind. Oh yes. I'm freaking out. I I, I can't <laughs> operate without these kind of rules, man. Well, speaking of rules, the way Dungeon World works is that you have basically a conversation going back and forth between the GM, in this case me, and the players. And uh, that conversation is always going to focus on what the players are doing and what they want to do. And sometimes what they do will trigger what's called a move. So moves are basically the actions, the thing that you do. And the basic moves in this game are hack and slash, that's a melee attack, volley, which is a ranged attack, defy danger, which can be a whole whack of different things, uh, defend, self-explanatory. Spout lore, which is making up BS. Discern reality is a kind of a perception thing. Parlay, which is to try and get leverage and manipulate somebody. And to aid or interfere when you want to help somebody or screw with them. So each of those moves is attached to a certain type of phrase that I will be listening for as we play the game. And when I hear a player say one of those phrases, I will tell them, it sounds like you're trying to spout lore and then I'll ask them to roll for that. Dungeon World uses a d6 system, and what that means is that when you have to roll, you roll 2d6 and then you add a modifier, either positive or negative. Uh, I can also add extra points to that if I think something is particularly cool or interesting or unique. Now in order to succeed, you have to get somewhere between 7 to 10 or more. But there's a catch. If you get 10 or more on any roll, you automatically succeed, you get everything that you want, and things are great. However, if you get between 7 to 9, it's a partial success. You succeed, but there's a catch. And the catch is up to me. So, for example, if you are going and fighting a monster and you go and do a hack and slash, you roll plus strength, and you get an 8. So you can say, well, I will say, so you strike the enemy. Oh, he got an 8. Perfect. 
Uh, you strike the enemy, but they're able to get a hit back on you as well. So I roll damage. Well, I don't actually roll anything. I never roll the dice. Uh, so you roll your damage against the monster, and then you roll the damage the monster gets against you, because the player always has to roll the die. And if a player is too much of a chicken to do that themselves, you get another player to roll the damage for you. That'll be me. <laughs> so uh, it's a pretty fun system. It's not very complicated, as you'll see when we go through. And character creation takes about five minutes. I think everyone's got their character created, so I'm going to go through and ask you to introduce your characters. I have sheets for some of you, but not all, so I'll be taking notes regardless, and I'll be asking you questions as you introduce your character in order to build the world as we go. All right, so first up, uh, Lanilar, played by Mike. Mike, tell us about Lanilar. Okay. Lanilar is an, is an elf with cold eyes, flowing hair, aristocratic clothes, and a muscular body. He is an arcane duelist, which is a... Uh, Special snowflake. Yes. And a class that... Uh, he's already an elf. I mean, come on. That's true. Uh, a class that uh, blends swordplay with magic. Uh, he belongs to an ancient martial tradition and has plus one to spouting lore. Uh, his alignment is neutral, and he is driven uh, to prove that his that his magical martial art is the strongest in the land. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, tell us about the arcane duelist. What do they do? They blend magic and sword play, right? How does that look? So the way that works is it tends to be it tends to work by channeling the elements into the into into uh, his blade it's inherently it's inherently weaved with the sword play so it's almost like they cast spells uh through complicated maneuvers uh, that involve using their swords uh, as implements or at least in his case it involves a sword since that's what he uses mm -hmm. um so i can achieve a create a vari uh, variety of effects depending on the maneuver that i perform and how well i perform it so you get techniques, right? Correct, techniques. So in this case, uh, if I roll, you know, if I if I get at least, I think a uh, seven to nine on an attack, I can trigger a technique. Mm -hmm. Anywhere from seven up, you can trigger a technique. If you Correct. have seven to nine, your opponent also gets a hit in on you. True. Yeah, the techniques I currently have available are flowing, where if I kill an opponent with that attack, I can attack another target automatically, as if I rolled 7th 9. Um, there's Galvanic, which creates an electrical surge, paralyzing one limb. Um, a burst technique, which does 1d4 extra damage and has the forceful tag on it. And then there's the Mirage Technique, which uh, conjures illusions that cause additional damage to nearby enemies, but they themselves do not trigger other techniques. Pretty fancy. Now the Forceful Tag, uh, some weapons have tags on them, some attacks have tags, which just describes an extra effect. Forceful, for example, means that it can knock someone back or even down. Okay, um, so what is your character's motivation? What's he like? Tell us about his personality. <laughs> So he's he's uh, he's aloof and arrogant. Uh, he believes that his skills are the best, and he will generally take any opportunity to prove that they are. So he streaks. He seeks out strong opponents. He's uh, he places a high uh, degree. He places a high emphasis on single combat. So he frequently calls uh, enemies out to duel in in you know in single combat and all of that, mm -hmm. uh, and is easily 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 goaded into combat uh by the opportunity to prove himself so where does he come from let's see he comes from he comes from the high elven lands who are generally regarded as the as the as the as the highest of the elves you know if you were to compare them to say the wood elves who live in the woods or uh sylvan elves who may live in plains and things like that the more shamanistic types these are the more civilized elves they build gleaming cities um, glittering towers and uh, re and have ha have a highly advanced society based on magic. He comes from you know one of the noble families is of an incredibly long lineage, um, and which is also where his uh, 
combat style comes from. So it's all very steeped in a lot of lore and a lot of history, and there's a lot of pride tied up in it. Now, who are the greatest rivals of your noble family? Uh, I would say the greatest rivals of Lanilar's family would be uh, would be a, a another elven clan uh, that boasts a similar lineage and a similar history, uh, and they have a they have a countering style to his, uh, and they have frequently been at odds with each other over over hundreds of years, perhaps even thousands. And uh, and you know tensions remain. In fact, uh, the city, the fortunes of the city he is from, has often ebbed and waned based on the conflict between his family and this other one. Oh, and what are those fortunes like right now? Are they ebbing or waning? Uh, right now they're at they're at re- right now things are relatively calm. Uh, their uh, tensions haven't haven't flared for a while, um, and that's largely due to the fact that both families uh, were kind of uh, the last time that they basically had you know an open an open war of sorts. The Elven King came down harshly on both of them, and and forced and kind of forced them to stop feuding on the result is that now instead of openly doing it they do it in the shadows through political maneuvering and um and you know assassinations and all that sort of thing uh Lanilar has been motivated to go out to the go out to the world and um since he is he is not the he's not the he's not the heir he is a second son oh, okay. uh and so he seeks to kind of uh you know Prove his way and show and bring uh, and bring the legend of his um, of of his heritage and his and his martial art uh, out into the world and in doing so you know gain prestige so that he can possibly uh, gain a higher position in society or even usurp the position of his elder brother. Oh, interesting. Oh, well, thank you, Mike. Or sorry, thank you, Lanilar. Ah, oh, thank you. Next up, Incursio, tell us about yourself. <laughs> All right, Incursio is a pompous ass. Man, of course, good he's... company. <laughs> wait, wait, I was going to be a pompous ass also. <laughs> this isn't going to work, guys. It'll be great. No, no, no. no. Okay. Let me restart you. He has a pomp- pomp- pompadour, see. Oh, I thought you were going to say he has a pompous ass. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he has a pompadour on his ass? No, that would just be weird. But no, uh, Incursio is actually kind of a good guy. He's he believes strongly in the goodness of people, and that's really to his detriment because he doesn't think that most people are bad. He thinks that monsters are bad. Therefore, it's like this kind of old style where like people aren't bad, uh, monsters are made to make them bad, or something like that. So evil, right. if it's something evil like that, it's an evil spirit. It's not the bad person. Oh, of course. Uh, so he has dedicated himself to destroying this evil. And he does so with a fantastic haircut. Oh, of course, yes. And you've recently heard that the source of that evil is around this area. Well, what, that's awful. Yeah, what was it called when you heard the rumor? What did they call this this source of evil? The the barber. The barber, perfect. <laughs> I like it. And who is your god? Uh, he does not actually believe in a god so much as he believes specifically in the force of good, which he belie- he actually carries around uh, a worn symbol of a rose, which is um, his personal icon, so to speak, of his deity. Well, deific force, I guess you'd say. Nice. Um, so yes, it's basically just the force of good rather than a specific deity. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and sorry, you were a paladin, right? Yes, he was a paladin. Okay, good. Now let's take a look at Willem. Who's Willem? He is a bard. Yes. Where does he come from? Oh, you know. He comes from <laughs> around here. Where is around here? What's this area called? This area is called uh, the Forest 
of three twins. Yeah, naturally, the forest of three twins, named after the three giant trees in the middle. I thought it was because of the three giant twins that stand in the middle arguing the whole time. Some people <laughs> mistake them for trees, but you're absolutely right. They're not really trees. True. Or maybe they're treants. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We just layered that lore on. That was awesome. Yeah, that, that, that is actually really cool. I like that. <laughs> I have heard rumors of treants in the area. All right. Wait, what did you hear? Rumors of treants in the area. Well, yeah, there's three giant ones in the middle. They're arguing the whole time. <laughs> That's the rumor. Now tell us, um, what is your area of expertise? What does Willem know about? Well, when he went to bard school, there were a lot of topics he could have learned about, but he went with what he felt was the easiest, which is his kind of M.O. in life. And he has studied the grand histories of the known world, which is good because I can make up a lot of it. That's true. And no doubt in your studies, you came across information about the barber, the source of all evil. Yes, he has a very large blade. The scissors. Okay. All right, thank you. And let's get to Feral, your character. The talk. legends of Lanelar's people also speak of this barber. <laughs> what do they call Once... the barber in Elven? <clears throat> they call him. Uh, they call him Dershadoth, which means the one who cuts. Of course, Dershadoth. I've heard that one before. Yes. That eons ago, like it has elves, nearly enough, elves, uh, elves, yeah. Eons ago, thanks to his evil, elves were forced to go without hair or short hair. But now, since his defeat, they can wear their longs long and flowing as they should be. Wear their longs long. Their longs, I think you make I'm it sure. locks long. Did, did anybody else hear that? Yeah, I fucked that up. <laughs> Thank you for Damn, pointing it. Damn, way to, way to be a out, of God. Gosh, Buster. <laughs> All right. I speaking guess, of sorry. long locks, tell us about Hawk. Okay, uh, <laughs> where should I start? Well, I what is Hawk? What does up. Hawk do? Uh, Hawk is a duelist. Um, well, if, if, if should I uh, point out my bonds right now? <laughs> oh, we're going to get to bonds in a minute. Okay. But first off, tell us, like, you know, is he a bard? Is Hawk a paladin, a cleric? Hawk is a fighter, travels the land with a sword, and uh, generally a relatively full coin purse, and makes money off of, well, also dueling, except through martial prowess without relying on the cowardice that is magic. Ooh. Primitive. Shots oh, fired. dear. <laughs> now, where does uh, Hawk come from originally? Uh, from the north. The north. What's yes. What's the north called? The North is called. Uh, wow. Uh, is uh, <laughs> is Hawk from what I did? <laughs> is and Hawk look at an item nearby and take the name of it? <laughs> <laughs> the North. I, I oh, max really power. I really can't do that because all I've got on my desk is like a, a drawing tablet, a desk fan, and a sonic screwdriver. Ooh, tablet. Call it that. Yes, the the land of Tabla. <laughs> yeah, I've heard it's quite cold there. Only in the winter. Oh, what's the uh, culture like? Are they an advanced civilization, or are they more barbarian-like? I don't want to say barbarian, but they, they, they live a traditional way. They kind of have that warrior's code, and they're good people, hardy people. Ah, of course. Good. So, right now, the four of you have ended up together in the Forest of the Three Twins somehow. So what we need to establish now are called bonds. And if you look on your character sheet, you'll have a space for bonds. You can have more than one bond with another character. But uh, 
you'll need to be able to explain a little bit about what that bond means. So take a minute, look at your character sheet, and fill out your bonds. Then I'm going to go around and ask you about your bonds. Doesn't need to be complicated, because I do have an adventure planned, but I'm rewriting it as we speak. Now, as I do that, I'll, uh, I guess, talk a little bit more about the system. So in Dungeon World, as you've just heard, the uh, Game Master will sort of push the players to make up the world as they go along. I came to the table with some notes, a basic idea of the story that we were going to go through, and so a couple of monsters made up. But that is all going to change as we go. I've already made some alterations to, for example, the final boss, assuming they ever get to the final boss, and to a few of the other monsters in the world based on these conversations that I've been having with the players. And I'll continue to do that as we go through and I ask the players different things about the world we live in. This means that Dungeon World doesn't require as much preparation on the GM's part as, say, any other system you've seen us play. Uh, because you can put the players on the spot and tell them to make stuff up for you if you want. And that's sort of what makes it fun. So how are we doing with those bonds? Has anyone finished them? I got them done. All right. Tell us about your bonds. Okay. So I, uh, there were four listed on the paladin sheet, so I just went ahead and filled all them in. Mm -hmm. uh, the first that I wrote down... Ladinlar has stood by me in battle and can be trusted completely. Really? Yes, and how I'm going to shape this is that we have actually dueled. And we fought hard, and we have come to an understanding through our blades. Ah, you spoke the song of men. Yes, exactly. They flexed. See, we <laughs> both have fit bodies, so it's like muscle code. Mm-hmm, yeah. Ex yes, exactly. That's actually highly appropriate because I have an ability called the Riddle of Steel. It says, when I cross swords with a humanoid opponent, I gain plus one to discern realities about them. Excellent. Uh, but my second bond is I respect the beliefs of Lanlar, but hope they will someday see the true way. I believe that Incursio wants to kind of bring Lanlar to be more of a good person. Okay. Uh, my third one is that I actually don't know how to do this so far, but uh, Willem's misguided behavior endangers their very soul. Oh so my. perhaps he's not very fond of bards. <laughs> he thinks all bards are gay. That's what it is. <laughs> of wow. course, they're all very happy people, otherwise they wouldn't have been bard school. And in addition, he is a homophobe. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's hoping no. that doesn't have to come into play, because I'd rather not deal with that. No, he's not a homophobe. Homophone? No, definitely homophone. not. Definitely not. We don't. He's a homophobe. Kind of though. Here. We don't. Uh, the fourth one is Hawk is a brave soul, and I have much to learn from him. I'm going to play that as Incursio believes that the kind of straightforward manner that Hawk deals with things, you know, uh, the warrior way, is very admirable, and wants to learn that. Of course, always good to learn new ways of wielding the blade. Exactly. All right, while that was going on, did anyone else finish their bonds? Yeah, I've got mine. Go for it. So, I'll go after I'm, gonna, Mike. I'm going to say uh, that Hawk broke up, broke up a fight I was in. I was probably going to lose, but they don't need to know that. Uh, and the way I'm going to spend it is that actually, um, before, before Incursio and, and Lanalar finished their duel, Hawk came upon them and broke it up. Um, and... Lanalar was, uh, and Curzio actually had the upper hand on Lanalar at that point, right. though he will not admit it. <laughs> um, so that's how the three of you met. Yes. Uh, Incursio and I are also regular training partners. That is um, the uh, second bond, because uh, <laughs> although Lanalar refuses to let himself believe that he almost lost, he does in his own way want to improve and get better, so he keeps on uh, fighting with Incursio, or, or sparring with him, really. Um, and, you know, he's a little competitive about it. Well, yeah, if you learn some new techniques, he'll be able to go home and challenge his older brother. That, too. 
Uh, for my third bond, I may have killed a relative of Hawk at some point in time. <gasps> Is this Dragon Age? <laughs> <laughs> Is this um, real? This is real life. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Ooh, I didn't think about that. Sorry, Farrell. I'm kidding. Oh, he was that, making that was... a joke, and now you've oh. made it awkward. Uh, that was... Quickly, move on, on to your next anyways, bond. Moving on. Yeah, yeah, move on. Willem seems like they would fold at the first sign of trouble. I don't trust them. Ah, <laughs> uh, that this, this is terrible considering Damn. what I've written. <laughs> you fucks! This is the great part of bonds. Yeah. Okay, and so you have four bonds there? Yes, that's four. Alright, good. So you've got a bond with every other party member. I should, of course, have mentioned that you need at least one bond with each party member. So, Willem, tell us about yours. No, no, no. I'm going last now. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear this. <laughs> I'm going okay. last. Okay. All right, well, Hawk, have you got your bond set? Indeed I do, and actually it was kind of funny that everything shook out that way, because <laughs> the first one is, Lanilar owes me their life, whether they admit it or not. <laughs> that's uh -huh. actually, I actually saw that, and that's why I made that bond that way. <laughs> oh, you dirty little I cheater. I peeked. Looking at my sheet, I'm shaking my finger at you. <laughs> that's okay. It's all part of the collaborative storytelling. I have sworn to protect Incursio. Excellent. Maybe at one point, you know, maybe in the midst of breaking up the fight, somebody else went after him too, and or or maybe even Incursio, like, you know, oh hey, you should look out instead, and then then shanked somebody that was about to to shank Hawk in the back. Yeah, it was Lanlar. You know, I bet. <laughs> what, what I bet here is that Incursio. Reminds you of your long dead younger brother. I yeah, I do miss my younger brother, who was mysteriously mm. killed as he was mysteriously murdered by a terrible elf. <laughs> I was accosted by a <laughs> barbarian robber on the road, as it happens, and cut him down. I I'm, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> it's not related, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, carry on your next spot. I worry about the ability of Willem the Bard to survive. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I wrote the nicest things I've ever written for you guys. <laughs> That's right, we're going to roll with it. We're going to roll with it. Listen, you can do it and make I, us all feel like bad people. I, I had to edit my last one so I could really twist the knife. Oh dear. Do it. Just do it. Willem the Bard is soft, but I will make him hard like me. <laughs> that's that's no, that works with one of mine. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, it's, I, it's I don't okay. like being a mean person, but it was like, ah, hey, you know what? Now, uh, as is often the case, uh, the Bard is more of a social character than a fighter. And as such, the bard gets more bonds than everyone else. So, Willem, why don't you tell us about your barns? Yeah, well, it's bard bonds. You're right, yeah, right, bards. That's right. Bards. So, my first two are tied together, which I think is essentially making my character into Juxar the Mighty, but... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love Juxar. Couldn't have a better right. uh, inspiration. All right, all right. So the first one, this is not my first adventure with Lanilar. We're uh -oh. meant to be bros, you fuck. <laughs> well, because, yeah, that's be <laughs> because right into the second, I am writing a ballad about the adventures of Lanilar the Flowing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you kind of started following me, and eventually it seemed like you weren't going to go away. So, yeah, I just decided to, hey, we'll have him along. But That's I... all right. Yeah. Because you're, you're Lanilar the Flowing. <laughs> uh, okay, well, as a result of the rivalry between Lanilar and Incursio, Incursio is often the butt of my jokes. Oh, that's really would be. <laughs> Indeed. I try to bring him down emotionally so that when they eventually have their rematch, I'll be able to put in some cutting barb that will give Lanilar the upper hand. 
Uh huh. Unfortunately, he's uh... a little too dumb to get most of the jokes. <laughs> yeah, he's probably like sprouting them in haiku or something. <laughs> that, or he just like thinks that like Willem, beside uh, d- despite his uh, jokes, uh, you know, obviously has a good soul. So he, he just thinks the best of them. Of course. Well, Willem doesn't, because apparently everybody hates Willem. <laughs> I don't hate Willem. Well, perhaps you should, because Hawk trusted me with a secret. Right into, Hawk does not trust me with good reason. <laughs> oh my. So whatever secret you told me, I promptly went and told everybody. <laughs> I was thinking it might be that you're a Shamali, but maybe we shouldn't do that. A what? Hawk, what secret did you trust him with? Mm. Okay, Ark got it. It may have been that I owe a, uh, I owe a noble uh, like a thousand gold, and I skipped out on the debt. Uh-oh. He immediately composed the ballad called Hawk the Debt Skipper. That's right. Sang it in the nearest tavern. <laughs> it is Hawk the most, of, of all the songs, it holds the record for the most uses of the word deadbeat. <laughs> <laughs> in seven different languages. It's true. I Everyone, love that everyone song, was by the way. present at the Barty Awards where <laughs> Willem <laughs> received his award for that. <laughs> She's never going to forgive him. All right. Is that all your bonds? Those are my bonds. Perfect. And you all hate me. (laughs) (laughs) Why don't you just scream in a mirror about it? Uh Oh. Maybe I will. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we are going to get started with the story. Can we actually take a small break? We're going to take a small break.